Hello, welcome to the channel and welcome back to Resurrect Autos HQ. So, guys, today is the final day. It's got to be on the WAF's Range Rover Evogue timing chain replacement. It has to get done today. Um, <clears throat> we've got loads of other cars coming in. I've got loads of projects for, of our own to sort out and do. But... I can see the finish line, guys. We are nearly, nearly there on the wife's car. Um, <clears throat> so, fingers crossed today that that starts with no problems whatsoever. Um, I really need it to go well today. I really do. So, yeah, there's not much else to say, guys. Let's just get into it. Let's do this. Right, guys. Last day. This has got to be done today. Um... We're nearly there, I've got to be honest. We've, you know, I've just got to check it, make sure everything's going back well. Uh, I've still got a load of bits and pieces to plug in, sort out. Um, I did plug in the injectors last night, uh, the coil packs. <coughs> Not injectors, coil packs um, yesterday, just before I left. So they're done. Um, we've still got to do, do up all these bolts and <coughs> just check, make sure pipes are connected and bits and pieces. Um, and then it's suspension work, so we've got to put all this back together, dry shaft back in place. Um, I think whilst we're doing this, I am, I am going to change the brake pads. Um, she's had this about two years. I've got to be honest, I haven't changed the pad since I've had it. For some reason, these seems to go on and on and on and on and on and on. I don't know if they're Brembo or what they are, but... <clears throat> yeah, they seem to sort of seem to be lasting really, really well. Um, it doesn't do a lot of miles in it, but I suppose you know it is what it is. But I thought, you know, whilst I've got the pads off this side, I'll strip the other side <clears throat> as well, um, and then we'll just do the pads on that. So, but yeah, this has got to get done today. So let's get set up. Let's do this. Right, okay. Guys, I think we are ready. I've checked, double checked. Plugs are in, everything's been done up. Um, yeah, I think we're at that time. Um, see if we can get this started. Um, obviously, there's no, I've undone all the uh, fuel line pipes to the high pressure fuel pump and some fuel lines and stuff. So, it might take a couple of turns or cranks to go, but I'm hoping that this ain't gonna take much and we're not gonna get any problems with this. So let's, oh, let's um, get that pump going a couple of times. So I'm just gonna turn it on and off. Try and bring a bit of fuel up to the actual, you can hear it clicking away. Right, let's have a go.
Well, it's running. A bit smoky. Nice, settled down quite well there. You know, it started off a little bit, obviously, you can hear the, that's the high pressure fuel pump there. But I'll tell you what, it's a lot, lot more quieter. A lot quieter. So I have put some flush, engine flush in this one, which is, uh, I'll show you which one it is. Um, this is put, I put this inside. So it says leave it for 20 minutes, 15, 15 20 minutes, then drain it um, <clears throat> and then put fresh oil in. I've ordered some really good oil, um, 5W uh, fully synthetic oil to put in this one. We are going to do the brake pads, they're on their way as well. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we are going to crack on with that and get that done as well, but at least. At least it's running um, and it's sounding really, really good. So I'm just going to let that oil flush sort of work around, obviously the uh, you know the top end and uh, give it a good, good old sort of work around. Make sure it's heated up. There's going to be the engine management light is going to be on. I know that because and it's going to it's not going to like it <laughs> because oh no the engine management light's not on but the ABS is on. Um, uh, yeah, it is, going, it is going a bit crazy when it comes to the old signs, but that's because we've we've disconnect. We've still got the um, suspension disconnected. All the all the plugs, all the plugs and wiring for this, it's still sort of not plugged in. So that's why that's going a bit crazy. But um, once you put it all back together, plug it all in, take it for a drive, it sort of come, kind of clears itself. But Great news, guys. Great news. It runs and sounds a lot, lot better. You can hear that tapping. And that's that high pressure fuel pump there. They, they tap all the time, don't they? And they put, um, um, like, put Ford come up with this, this way of trying to do the noise. We put a foam covering over it. You just put a <laughs> covering over it. But, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah, there we go. Right. I'm going to let that run for about 15, 20 minutes and then we're going to drop the oil, put some oil in. Oh, I think that's the VVTs. <laughs> I'm not sure. It just started making a funny, weird sound. Did you hear that on camera? I hope you heard that on camera. Um, but yeah, you know, drop the oil, put the good stuff in, um, and then hopefully um, everything's okay. But so far, so good. So bear with me, guys. I'll set you up, and let's get this suspension uh, drive shaft all back in place, and then actually start getting this back together. So let's do this.
Right, okay, guys, I'm gonna quickly cut in there, tell you what's been going on, what I've been doing. Um, as you can see, that is now the flush. It's been draining for a while, just been dripping away there. So I'll put the plug back in and then we'll put some nice, fresh, new oil. This one here. Um, so, yeah, good stuff. So I'll put that in and then that'll be the oil change done. Um, I've been working around doing the suspension parts of this as well. Um, I, have did, I have got a really good tool that I've just purchased that I found about, which is this one here. Um, and what that basically does, it's, it splits the knuckle there on these suspensions. You've got this knuckle and that sits at the back and you do it up and that sort of obviously gets longer and it separates the knuckle so you can slide the suspension arm straight down without struggling. <laughs> The amount of times I've struggled to, to sort of separate and re put in, re place those suspension parts. So I thought I went out and got one of these. It was like 20 quid, 25 quid. Um, so right handy. It was really quick. I opened it up on the knuckle and it slid straight in. So that is going to be used quite a lot of times now when doing these kind of jobs. Um, but yeah, all the plugs and wires have been put back together put back on up there they've run up there stuff like that so that's all been done um all the bolts have been done up all over all around everything's been done up and sorted what's left now is the brakes now i ordered a pair of set of brakes brake pads for this for the fronts and the they turned up and with the rears so yeah we can't do the front brake pads we can remove the old ones on this side, but we can't change the pads quite yet because they need to bring out the right ones this time. So I'm not gonna exchange the backs for the fronts. All I'm gonna do is put new ones on the backs as well. Now, um, I'll take these tires back off these wheels and we'll do, we may as well, I've got the pads now. Um, I wasn't gonna do it because we've got quite a lot of, tre uh, like quite a lot of beef thickness left on the pads but what the hell let's do it for her so she's got new brake pads all around um and yeah i won't have to worry about that for a while so yeah just wanted to quickly explain what was going on um so let's chuck in some oil and then we're gonna just move on cracking on with the braking system getting the brake pads we've got to go into the car and put it into service mode with the rear pads on this one You've got to do a sequence. You go in, you do a sequence of holding the um, electronic brake, um, ignition, throttle, something like that. And then it releases and lets you work on the rear um, rear brakes for the, um, yeah, because it's an electronically uh, controlled handbrake on this one. So it's a bit fiddly, but we'll get there. We'll get it done. So I'll set you up. Let's do this.
Right, guys, finally, it's done. Um, when it comes to the brakes and the engine, there is still a couple of issues that I do want to um, address with this car. Whether or not I've got time today, um, I don't know, but we're, I'll give it a try. Um, basically, on the computer, it's saying man, the modules um, on the doors are not working or uh, something's going on with the actual mechanisms. So I've got to take off. It's actually, um, what one is it? This one. Don't open. So it's rather the, the locking mechanism or it's the module. I'm not quite sure um, which one it's going to be. Uh, so what I might do is I might pull the car over there a little bit. I can't show too much at the minute because there is another project. <laughs> there is a there is a new project that's just that's just down there, um, and I can't can't quite show too. It's, it's hard because I've got I've got one project that I've already shown you, but there's four other <laughs> cars sitting around, and it's very difficult to try and not to try and get in the shot at the minute. Um, so. Yeah, bear with me. Let me move a few cars around and then I'll come back to you and then we'll bring this over a little bit and, um, yeah, I'll explain on the door what is going on. So, plus, obviously, I've got to take this for a test drive as well. So I might as well take it for a quick drive around the block, make sure everything's good, and then come back. And then, yeah, we'll get cracking with those um, with the door and the module, see what's going on there, try and get it open, and then take the door card off um, and then just try and work out. Even if we take the door card off, at least then I can get to uh, part numbers and stuff like that um, to get it repaired later on. I haven't got the, obviously, the parts because I don't know the numbers at the minute. So, yeah, there's a few bits and pieces to do still. But bear with me for now. I'll take it for a drive. I'll come back and let you know how that goes. So, yeah, see you soon. Okay, guys, I'm back from the test drive with the wife's car and incredible. It drives like brand new again. Um, yeah, it, it really does show like once you change the chain and it stopped, it, it, you know, and the engine is performing exactly how it should perform. Um, it, it's just such a massive difference. It's, a, it's incredible. Like it's unbelievable but obviously i've put new tires on it you know it's got new brake pads all around um i've done the actual timing chain sorted all that out give it a give it a service as well so it just sounds lovely it sounds nice and smooth it drives really nice and responsive it's a lot more responsive now than it is was before and i think that's all to do with the chain and the variable vibe vbts um on the camshaft it just yeah such a lovely drive now so I'm really, really happy. Um, the only thing I want to sort out now, like I said, I need to get this open and see if we can get this door card off the inside. The only way to open it is from the is from the inside, and it lets you open the door like that. So, yeah, is it the locking mechanism, or is it the module? Um, and obviously, I want to sort of you know scan it as well put the computer on it, see what's going on, and then we'll go from there. So let's get this off now. I'll have to work out what's, how to get this, what, these door cards off. Um, and then, yeah, we'll uh, see what is going on. So let's do this.
Right, okay. So what I figured out, guys, is that what was happening is that when you shut the door, um, you can't open it from the outside once you lock it. But when you've unlocked it, clear the codes, which I've, which I've been doing. So I cleared the codes um, and then tried the door again. And it, it allows you to open the door from the outside with the handle. But as soon as you close the door and lock the, the car, uh, double lock the car, it then won't work. The lock won't work. So it's definitely got an, uh, something to do with the actual locking mechanism and not the actual um, module, which is this here. That's the module that controls um, that particular door. Now, there's a module like that on all four doors and the boot tailgate there's modules everywhere i think there's about 35 different modules on this particular car so yeah um but what i've figured i've took the door card off and i'm just trying to have a look to see what's going on and i don't know if i can you can see it but there is some residue water all over that lock on all over that 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 um plug it's all over it. So, um, <clears throat> I'm going to have to change that that actual door locking mechanism at the minute. I can't quite get it out because I don't want to strip the car down any further because she's still got a... She still wants to take this car um, and then we'll have to get it back another day and get this sorted out for her um so i don't want to sort of be taking too much of this car apart because she wants it back tomorrow morning um so yeah but i think that's what i'm gonna have to do i'm gonna have to order another one of those door mechanisms and then switch it out and swap it um you know whenever it turns up or whenever i can get it but that seems like that's that's the issue and that's the problem so yeah anyway at least you know i've got down to it i'm gonna take some pictures of it um, and, and compare it to other ones and make sure I get the right one, um, stuff like that. But um, that's kind of really as far as I'm going to take this. I'm going to put this door card back on, put all that back together for her, um, and then she can drive the car while we wait for the part to turn up. Um, yeah, it makes sense doing it like that. I don't want to hold on to the car any more than what I need to. Um, but, yeah, that is... That is what I found, um, and that is what I'll be doing later on down the line. But apart from that, everything else is yeah is is really good, and uh, you know she can have her car back now, um, and it's all it's all done. Took a few days to do this one. I've got to be honest, but you know it it, it is an absolute pain. There's just no room to work around that car and around that engine. It's just it's just crazy the, the design of it, but it is what it is. It's a range, it's a Land Rover Range Rover. It, it, they are always a pain, no matter what you're doing them. Um, it is an absolute pain to get sorted, but we got there in the end. It's all done, um, and she'll be well happy with that. But um, but yeah, so that's it, guys. That is the end of today's video, and probably you're not going to see this for a while until that part comes in um, tomorrow. We are going to be jumping on um, uh, one of my subscribers' cars. Um, he actually bought it off me a year ago, John. Uh, he bought a red Fiesta off me. Uh, now that is back for a service and an MOT tomorrow. Um, we'll, you know, That's not going to take up the whole day, so we'll probably jump on something else after that. But I really want to get John's car sorted out to him, for him tomorrow morning. Um, I think there's another service coming in tomorrow as well it could be a full c max might be coming in tomorrow as well so just a couple of bre bread and butter cars um <clears throat> a couple of uh, customers cars coming in tomorrow for some work but for today that's it guys thanks for watching and i'll see you tomorrow in the next one take care see you soon